This video will demonstrate using the law of sines using two specific examples where you're given an angle, an angle, and a side, or an angle, a side, and then another angle. Let's start again with our oblique triangle. Again, our angles are given by capital letters A, B, and C, and the sides opposite those angles are given the same letters A, B, and C, but this time in lowercase. Say, for instance, I give you an oblique triangle with two angles. I've given you that A is 43 degrees and B is 57 degrees. And I'm going to give you one more piece of information, that that side A, that is the side opposite the angle A, is equal to 4.56. Now, can I solve this triangle? Remember, solving the triangle means give me all the angles and all the sides. If this was a right triangle, I'd know what to do. But now I'm going to have to use my law of sines because this is an oblique triangle. All right, so to solve this triangle, first of all, let's get rid of the capital C and the lowercase c because first I want to find the side B, the side opposite the angle 57 degrees. So I'm given two angles and then a side. This is called an AAS because I'm given an angle, an angle, and a side. I'm just going counterclockwise through my triangle. So if I recall, one form of the law of sines was a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. Of course, this is also equal to c over sine c, but let's just focus on this right now because I know a, my angle a is 43 degrees, I know my angle b is 57 degrees, and I know my side a is 4.56. So all I need to do is solve for b. I usually start off by making sure my unknown is on the left-hand side. From here, all I need to do is multiply both sides by sine of 57 degrees. We can see that sine of 57 degrees divided by sine of 57 degrees is just one leaving us b on the left-hand side. And then a whole bunch of things on the right-hand side. Well, I can use my calculator for this. And remember, my calculator needs to be in, yes, degree mode. And then I find that the length of side B is 5.61. And we'll put that there. Okay, now we've got one more angle and one more side to worry about. Now I have my whole law of sines up there, A, B, and C. Again, the side A is 4.56 and that angle is 43 degrees. We have now figured out the side B, and we already knew that angle of B. Well, the trouble is, I don't see how I can solve for either the length of the side C or the angle C with what I have right now. But what I can remember is that the sum of the angles of a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. So by using this, I can find what that angle C is. It's just 180 degrees minus the sum of A plus B. In this case, C is equal to 80 degrees. So if I go ahead and put that in my triangle and fill in that sine of C is actually a sine of 80 degrees, then I can go ahead and solve for my remaining missing side, lowercase c. I can use either A over sine of A or B over sine of B, but I'm going to choose a over sine of A. And why am I doing that? Again, if I can avoid it, I try not to use numbers that I've calculated myself. The original problem had given me 4.56, so I'm going to use that in conjunction with the angle 43 degrees. And putting that together and going ahead and solving this, I come up with C is equal to 6.58. So we have solved this triangle given two angles and one side, and this was in the AAS form. That is, we had 43 degrees, 57 degrees, and 4.56. So that was what we originally had. What if instead of giving you that side A, what if I had given you that side C? This would have been an ASA, an angle side angle. That is, its side is between two known angles could I have still solved this using the law of sines? Well, what I'd like you to do is anytime you're given two angles, just before you even start with the law of sines, find that unknown angle. Just like we did before, that angle is going to be 180 degrees minus the sum of 43 degrees and 57 degrees, and that will still be 80 degrees. Now that I have all three angles, we can see that whatever side I have, in this case I have side C, I'm going to be able to solve for each 
other side. I could solve for b in this case, and then I could go back and solve for a. So the law of sine works given any two angles and any side, either AAS or ASA. But if you remember, if you're given two angles plus a side, you can use the law of sines. You don't have to memorize the AAS or ASA. Two angles plus a side, law of sine works. And that's an example using the law of sines with the two angles plus a side. The next video will talk about another case that you can use the law of sines and then introduce some cases where the law of sines won't be working.